and the Iron Curtain has been reformed. The Soviet Union has been reformed and we are stronger than ever. Hey, also Gaming here. Today we're going to be playing Hearts of Iron 4 Millennium Dawn mod. Now just before the video starts, I want to remind everyone that this is a fairly new channel and the chances are, when you're watching this video, I only have a few subscribers. So if you don't mind and you want more Hearts of Iron 4 content, just, just please hit the subscribe button. It will make my day and it makes me know that people want this content. Right, anyways, back into the video. So the Millennium Dawn mod is supposed to be a reflective of our modern day world. And I'd say... Yeah, that's pretty accurate. But today we're not going to be playing the 2017 start date, but we're going to be playing the 2000 start date because we are going to reform the Soviet Union. The first that we can do is to just put down these Chechnyan rebels. And yeah, that's honestly not too hard. Well, goodbye Chechnya. Right, so one of the really annoying things about Millennium Dawn mod is the production coup. L look how many equipment there are. H how am I supposed to manage this all? And the reason the production coup is such a nightmare is just, just, just look at this. This is a mess. This, this shouldn't exist. But before I can change my templates, I guess we'll have to put a million equipment in our production coup. Uh, and now we can do the 2000 Russian general elections. And we are going to be choosing Zhuganov. I don't know Russian. I, I have no idea if I pronounced that correctly. Ah, the elections of 2000. And Zhuganov is elected president. Voila! Defeat for Vladimir Putin in the election. And now we've got Zhuganov as our national leader. And oh no, we've got the Kursk submarine disaster. Horrible. And now it's time for us to ban the Nationalist Party. Oh, well. 9-11 just happened, but it's not quite on 9-11, is it? Now, despite us being ruled by the Russian Communist Party, we are still called Russia, and we have this disgusting green color as our country. So, let's change that. Ah, yes, and the Soviet Union is officially back, and we've got that tasty red color. But no, 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 that's not the end of the video because we have to take back our old land. And with this focus, we can just get Belarus for free, which is, yeah, it's pretty nice. Ah, and Belarus actually rejected the request. Interesting. Well, I'm sure this will be nothing more than a minor annoyance to us. And yeah, we're absolutely steamrolling them. Red. Belarus, I hope that gives you a lesson about betraying Mother Russia. It's always a bad idea. Alright, I've completed the three focuses that gives us war goal against our former territory. Now, we have to do this in a smart way, which gives us the territory that we need, and at the same time, avoids war against the Western Allies, because we're just not ready to take them on yet. So, there are three countries that we cannot invade yet. Number one, Lithuania, because they are directly NATO's and they can call them into the war. And number two, Estonia, same reason, they are in NATO. Now the third country, Azerbaijan, is not actually in NATO, but guess what? They're guaranteed by Turkey, and wouldn't you know it, Turkey is part of NATO, 
So those are the three countries that we cannot invade yet, but all the other countries we can actually invade without NATO interfering immediately. But at a certain world tension, NATO can guarantee them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare war on all of them, all at once, so that NATO cannot guarantee any of those countries. And I'm just going to steamroll over those countries. All right, and all the wars that we need to declare is declared. You can see that world tension is now 100% because I declared war on a lot of countries. But because we declared war on all of them, NATO cannot guarantee them. And since I did not declare war on the members that will instantly join NATO, they will not join the war. And I can just take these territories for free. And, ah, nothing like rolling over weak countries. It's my favorite pastime. Rip up, 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 yeah. No idea how to pronounce that. Rip. Rip South Ossetia. Again, I have no idea how to pronounce that. Rip Georgia. Rip Latvia. Rip Artsakh, whatever that is. Rip Armenia, Rip Kazakhstan, Rip Tajikistan. Rip Kyrgyzstan. Rip Uzbekistan. And rip Turkmenistan. All right, that's all the countries we can invade at the moment. And not gonna lie, the Soviet Union is looking kind of sexy right now. Now, one country that we don't actually have a war go against is Ukraine. Now we have a few options with Ukraine. The first option is, of course, declare war on them when World War Three starts. Or, we can make use of these mechanics to turn them to our puppet. And this is the button that we want to click. Now the problem is they are currently in the non-aligned outlook. And we need them to flip to the emerging outlook in order to turn them into our puppet. So we are going to influence our politics and when the election comes in November 2005, we should be able to turn them to emerging outlook or alternatively we can stage a coup which has a 42% chance of succeeding and we can turn them into emerging outlook immediately that way so what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to start the coup right now and if that fails well we have other alternatives Wait, what? Republic of China just declared war on the Philippines. I don't think this happened in real life, right? Uh... Oh! And... I think the coup worked! Dramatic scenes as regime change swoops Ukraine. They are now ruled under this fellow. Oh, and what is this? Holy shit! 
the Philippines and America just signed uh, an alliance called the North American Federation. Does this mean there will be no NATO? Because that'd be very useful. Oh, things are going down. China declared war on the Republic of China. And there's the continuation of the Second Chinese Civil War. But this time, the Republic of China faces the might of both the United States and China. Pretty sure that's game over for them. And oh, that's the invasion of Taiwan. I don't think they're going to last that long. Oh, and China is unified once more. Oh, <laughs> the Americans puppeted part of Taiwan. That's a huge screw you to China. Oh my God. And we now have enough influence and with a click of a button, Ukraine is now our puppet. <laughs> Why didn't Putin just do this in real life? Uh, now, we'll just feed them a lot of convoys and hopefully we can annex them without even bleeding. Oh, and Germany just left the European Union. I have no idea what's up with the AI. They keep leaving the European Union. Just then I just saw France leave the European Union. I saw Finland, Sweden, a lot of big countries left the European Union. So I don't know what's up. And I've been actually influencing Azerbaijani politics and now I can turn them into a puppet as well. Just like that. They're now my puppet as well. And three more countries has left the European Union. The European Union basically has no members right now. Which is, I've never seen this before. And now we only have two countries remaining to defeat. Lithuania and Estonia. Now, of course, I can cheese it and spread influence, turn them on our puppets and annex them just like I did for Ukraine and Azerbaijan, but that really won't be fun. So, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to justify on a nation that is not guaranteed by the United Kingdom or the United States because they are in the North American Federation. And I hope when I declare one that country, other NATO nations will join the war but not the United Kingdom or the United States. And this way we can conquer all of Europe without having to cross the Atlantic or the English Channel. And we can assert our dominance over Europe. So I am going to justify on Moldova. You see they are guaranteed by Bulgaria, which is also a country in NATO. So in 50 days we might start World War 3 and our war go against Moldova has been complete and you know what that means it's time for the Russian conquest of Europe and Moldova has fallen to the communists I've encircled the Polish army here. It's looking rough for Poland. And American tanks are absolutely shredding our tanks. That is why we should not have got American into the war. Mind you, these are just fallen pairs. These are not even their entire army. Oh, and Slovakia just joined the war. Yeah, my tanks up here are just dying. The Americans with their tanks. The entire tank army just got in circle because of the American tanks. And Lithuania has just been called in the war. And 
and I'll soon circle more troops here. And again, the American tanks are just shredding us wherever they go, wherever I lose. And I can't really fight back because they just, they're just, they're just overwhelming me. I'm actually breaking through in northern Poland, so we are making gains, and Kaliningrad has been retaken, as well as Gdansk, aka former Danzig. After months of sieging, the Lithuanian capital has finally fallen, and Lithuania has been liberated under the Red Army. We are freaking through to Germany. Oh, let's see how long this lasts. And we are officially breaking through into the German mainland. We are at the doorstep of Berlin and we're in Faden Denmark. And Berlin has officially fallen to the Russian troops for the second time in 100 years. We are actually breaking through into the Netherlands right now. This is kind of crazy. And the Netherlands has capitulated. Oh my god. And can we offer them a ceasefire? Netherlands has accepted our ceasefire. And we get their territories for free. Oh no. Turkey is breaking through in the south. Shouldn't be a big problem though. And Belgium has also capitulated, but unfortunately they still have control for this one city, which means I can't take control of all of the states, even if I offer a ceasefire. So we have to encircle Liege and take the city. History often repeats itself. Paris has fallen to the Russian army. And Leech has finally fallen, which means we can offer a ceasefire to Belgium and hopefully take over all of their fate. Belgium accepts our ceasefire. Wonderful.
alright, and I think I thought the Western Allies took complete standstill at this point. I ca literally cannot advance any further. And to prove my point, I'll just order these 12 fully equipped, fully organized tank divisions versus these two French divisions. And you can see we can't attack at all. Even though we outnumbered them to 6 to 1, they have got, what, a 40% entrenchment bonus, which is just insane. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to offer peace to Poland, and that is going to end the war. Because I declared war on Poland, and that is what caused this war. And once their troops start moving around, I'll declare war on Poland again, and hopefully it will eliminate their entrenchment bonus. And Slovakia accepted our ceasefire, and now to Poland. If they accept, the war will end. And Poland has accepted the ceasefire. So as you can see, we lost all of our uh, territories that we held in Germany. But we do have control of a few Polish states as well as Belgium and the Netherlands. Now I'm going to reorganize my troops and we're going to invade them once more. This time without all the entrenchment bonus from the enemy. I've also released Belgium and Netherlands as my puppets because I want to call them in the war at the right time. Attack. Oh, and now we can actually annex Estonia. So, theoretically, the Soviet Union has got all of its old territories back. But I really want to win this war. Turkish, it seems like, are breaking through our lines once again, and that is not good at all.
Oh, and this is a pretty thick encirclement. What is that? 27 divisions? And Warsaw has fallen to the advancing Russian army. There will be no miracle at the fistula this time. Well, I think I'm going to call Belgium in the war because I think I just reached the point again where I cannot advance and everything has broken into a stalemate. So let's hope that changes that. German front has been left undefended. Advance! And we have reached Köln, and I can't believe I'm finally breaking through. Berlin has fallen for the third time in 100 years to the advancing Russian army. My god, you have no idea how relieved I am to say this. The Germans has finally capitulated. I've finally done it boys. And I think I can offer a ceasefire to the Germans. And Germany has accepted our ceasefire. And we're just blitzing through the Czech Republic right now. Apparently we can't capitulate Poland or else the ceasefire won't work, which is kind of annoying. But what can you do about it? What can you do about it? And the Czechs have capitulated. I'll first offer a ceasefire to them. And the Czech Republic has accepted our ceasefire. Now for the moment of truth, we'll offer a ceasefire to Poland. Poland has accepted our peace ceasefire and all hostilities has been ceased. Now since this is kind of annoying that I can't capitulate Poland even though I have the military power to do so, I'll just... yeah this is cheating but I don't want to fight another war with NATO again. So with this war done, I think I have successfully reunited the Soviet Union and we have spread communism deep into Europe and the Iron Curtain has been reformed, the Soviet Union has been reformed and we are stronger than ever. That is where I'm going to call this episode. I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you all so much for watching this video. This is my first video so again if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more of this type of video Please subscribe and like this video with the Soviet Union reformed and the Iron Curtain stronger than ever. We have made Papa Stalin happy and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.